Hey, I'm Dan from MapTech and today we're going to look at some photos of drill rigs. So obviously we're not just going to look at photos of drill rigs. That'd be kind of boring, but honestly I couldn't come up with anything better that didn't seem wordy or confusing and no one really wants that as an intro. So what we're actually going to talk about is some of the limitations we need to be aware of when planning the collar positions of our drill holes with respect to drill rig setup constraints. And this is especially important in an underground diamond drilling setting, so that's going to be the scenario we'll focus on today. For those that aren't aware, this is the second video in my Drill Hole Planning with Dan series, where I'm going to share a bunch of videos and walk you through the new drill hole planning tools in Vulcan and how to use them effectively. I'm sure if you ask your drilling contractor really nicely, they might be able to provide some documentation to outline any site setup requirements specific to the particular drill rig they're using. So what we're going to do is look at how we can use an example of those sorts of documents to create a specification file using the new drill rig setup specification tool in Vulcan 2021.2. I've spent a fair bit of time planning drill programs in my career and one of the most time consuming tasks in the process, especially in the underground environment, is making sure that the drillers can actually set the drill rig up on the holes you've spent considerable time and effort planning. There's nothing worse than being in the mining office and hearing the drillers call up on the radio to let you know that they can't align the rig on one of the holes, especially if it's the last hole in the program and now you get to pay stand down rates and know the drillers are carton, it really just ruins your day. So why do we have situations where a drill rig can't set up on a particular collar? Well, we are actually going to look at some photos of drill rigs, but largely so we can get an idea of what's involved and where some of these limitations come into play. So. Here we have an underground diamond drill rig that's mounted to a jumbo carrier. One of the advantages of these style of rigs is that they can train themselves to their drill cutty and not have to rely on a bogger to move them. But if we zoom in here a bit, I'm sure you'll see that the boom on the front of the rig means there's going to be restrictions in, in how far the boom can articulate back on itself since it can't drill backwards behind the control panel there. So that means if we want to drill a hole in the direction behind the rig, the rig's going to have to turn around and face the opposite direction from where it's facing in this photo. Now, if this was right up at the end of the drive near the face, this means we'd need to allow enough space for the back of the rig to fit in, which as we'll see in the example later, means for this kind of drill rig, we have to leave at least 14 meters from the face. Some rigs, the size and shape of the rig itself defines some of the setup constraints. It wasn't super clear from the previous photos, but there's a lot of other gear that goes into a drill rig setup besides just the rig. So we're looking at a different type of rig now, one that's not mounted on a carrier. But you can clearly see there's a lot going on here. You've got jump up stands to allow the offsider to get to the rig to pull the tube and the rods. You've got to store the rods themselves somewhere. There's got to be space for the pumps and the drilling muds and all sorts of tools. And there needs to be space to wash the drill core as it's pulled out of the tube, space to use the ORI tool to mark the orientations on the core, and then you're going to have space to park the ute and other miscellaneous items. And some of these items need to be put in certain spots in relation to the rig, and so that'll also create a setup constraint. So all this means it's not just as simple as designing a drill hole collar from wherever you want. All these constraints need to be factored into the location. Historically, this involved a lot of manually measuring things on screen and looking up each planned drill hole to see where the collar should go based on the documentation provided by the drilling contractor. So we wanted to make this easier on both the geologists and the drillers. So we've created a tool to store these parameters in a spec file and then have the create drill holes tool automatically adjust the collar locations to align with the drill rig setup constraints. So let's look at an example of some documentation from a drilling contractor and create a specification file from it. In the Vulcan Help, and you're going to get a sneak peek in the upcoming online Vulcan Help here, we've included some documentation provided by Swick Mining Services, who have been nice enough to let us use this as an example. So we can see here they've provided a collar point matrix that outlines where the collar of the hole needs to be in relation to the floor, walls, face, and the backs when looking at holes drilled in different orientations. Now it's important to remember that the azimuth values listed here are all relative to the orientation of the face or the end of the drive. So we're treating the face like it's north or zero degrees. 
But don't worry, the tool that automatically adjusts the collar factors this in and back calculates relative to the actual azimuth of the holes. So we've got the collar point matrix there, but you can see we've also got some pretty pictures of the drill rig and how the collar point matrix looks visually for the dip in these images uh, and also with the azimuth parameters outlined. So here you can notice uh, these three images at the bottom relate to what I was talking about in the photo earlier that in order to drill a hole here or here or here we've got to reverse the drill rig into the drive it's going to be facing, you know, this way. It's going to be facing south in this picture. So we need 14 meters, at least from the face, to be able to drill any of these holes here. So the help shows how to convert that collar point matrix and these images into a spec file. But I'll do a bit of a live demo here. So we'll go into geology, drill hole planning, drill rig setup specification. So firstly, I'm going to create a spec file. And firstly, I'm going to configure my azimuth ranges. So I'm going to rip this straight from the help. So I pick my first azimuth range and then I can configure my dip range. So again, I'm just going to rip this straight from the SWIC documentation. And then I'm going to use the copy to other azimuth ranges option to copy these dip ranges into each of those other azimuth ranges for me. I can hit OK. You can see now it's populated all of those ranges for me. And the defaults you can see are set to not available. So I have to go in and define everything. So if we look at the help, we can see that our collar position is going to be in the floor. Now it needs to be at least half a meter from the right wall. So I'm going to give it a bit of a buffer and I'll make this 0.7. And then it's going to be 1.2 from the face when we give, well, it needs to be at least a meter from the face, but I'll give it a 1.2 to have that little bit of a buffer. So then if we kind of keep going down, our next hole is going to be in, our next range is going to be in the toe of the face. Again, it's going to be half a meter at least, so I'll give it a 0.7 from the right wall. Now, because this one's in the toe, I don't need to define a second distance from parameter, right? So I can just sort of set this to none, and then it grays itself out. Now, minus 30 to minus 15, they're going to be in the face. Again, I'll copy and paste my 0.7, um, this one's going to be 0.8 from the floor. Next one is going to be in the face, 0.6, give it a buffer, 1.5 from the floor. 15 to 45 is also in the face. Give this one a 0.7. This one's going to be three meters from the floor. That's going to be in the shoulder of the face. Also 0.7 from the right wall. This one can be none because it's in the shoulder. We can do the backs for this one once we're getting our up holes. And it's going to be a meter from the face. So as you can see, as my as I work my way through to the steeper holes, we move um, up the wall, away from the floor and into the backs. All right. Now, as much as I'm sure you'd all love to watch me fill this in for ages, I'm going to fast forward through this bit. You can always look at the help anyway, as everything I'm entering here is in the help as the example. So now you can see I've got my completed 
specification file. So I can save that and I can close the panel. But one thing I haven't mentioned is that this spec file I'm making here is actually provided for you and placed in your Vulkan resources folder when Vulkan's installed. So if you're using SWIC as your drilling contractor, feel free to use that spec file. Uh, just be sure to double check everything in the spec file matches the documentation so we could provided you on site and your own site procedures. It's important to note that from Vulcan 2021.3, if you have the corporate standards Vulcan environment variable defined, then this file will get copied into the folder you have defined there and the appropriate tools will recognize spec files from your corporate standards folder. Well, there really isn't much more to the drill rig setup specification tool than that. However, in a future video in the series, I'll go through how I can use the spec file I've just made to automatically adjust my collar positions in the new Create Drill Holes tool. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch up with you in the next video in the series where we'll take a brief look at the cost estimation specification tool. Cheers.